So Russia has just recently created their own TLS certificate authority, apparently to bypass a lot of the online sanctions that they've been getting. But what does this actually mean? What is a certificate authority? How did Russia create one? And how could it be used to bypass these online sanctions? So essentially, a certificate authority is a trusted organization that verifies that the websites that you are connecting to are who they say they are. So most of the time, when you go to a website, you're going to be either typing in its name into your browser's URL bar, uh, or maybe you are going to click on a link that somebody sends you that goes to some specific video or post or whatever kind of content. But the way that these websites and that these links work is somewhere in the world, there is a server that is serving up the content that's on the website. Or in the case of a site like YouTube, there are many, many servers that are serving up content that you get connected to. But these servers, they don't really have names like YouTube.com, okay? They have IP addresses that might look something like this. But having to remember a string of numbers for every single site that you want to visit would be too hard, okay? Let's like imagine trying to remember the phone number for every single one of your friends. That doesn't make sense. You have them in your contacts, and so you have a name that maps to that phone number. So the mapping of the name like youtube.com to an IP address, that is where DNS comes in. You type in or you click on a link to YouTube and then the DNS server directs you to the IP address for that website. But these DNS servers, they can get hacked and they are actually a very common target for hackers because if a hacker can compromise a DNS server, then they can just redirect you to any site they want. And oftentimes what they might do is they'll copy something like say your bank's website. It's very easy to just download all the HTML and CSS and everything for a site and then just spin it up yourself. Uh, so they will copy it. And then when you go to the bank's website, you actually end up on their site, which looks exactly the same as the bank's. And then you give them your account details without even realizing it. So to prevent this, we have SSL certificates, okay? If you notice, uh, pretty much every website that you go to, uh, that you visit is going to start with HTTPS. And then to the left of it, it's going to have a green or maybe a gray lock pad uh, that indicates that you're making a secure connection to the site. Now, part of the reason that this connection is considered secure is because it is encrypted. It is using HTT or it's using uh, SSL rather or TLS to do the encryption of the connection so that if somebody is listening in, they can't exactly see what you're doing on the site. All of the contents, things like your username and password, those would be encrypted when you're using an HTTPS connection, but it is still possible for somebody to spoof an encrypted HTTPS connection. Now, it's not very easy to do, but it is possible if somebody is listening uh, on your connection, even though they're listening in on an encrypted connection, to intercept the packet that is requesting, say, YouTube.com, and they're able to read the TLS parameters of it, and they're able to see, okay, this person's trying to reach YouTube. So what I can do then if I'm intercepting it is I can respond to you on behalf of YouTube because I know YouTube's IP address. It's very easy to figure out. And I can reply back and make you think that I'm YouTube, but with my own TLS parameters. And you wouldn't even really realize that this is happening uh, without you actually going and inspecting the certificate to see who it's being verified by. Uh, if you don't look at this, then it will look like you're actually connecting to YouTube securely. And if the hacker that's doing this man in the middle attack is smart, then what they'll do on their end is they'll just forward every request that you're making uh, to YouTube on behalf of you and then return that back to you. So the hacker is basically acting like a proxy, right? But they can see everything that you're doing on YouTube and then they can now blackmail you with your VTuber addiction. So the connections to these sites, they can be faked. The certificates, okay, that are saying that they're legitimate, those can be faked as well. 
Um, but the part that cannot be faked, and this is where the uh, certificate authority comes in, is they are able to sign off on the certificate and say, okay, this is authentic. It's not just something that was faked. It's kind of like with passports, right? You have real passports and then you have fake ones. And because most people can't tell the difference, especially with a really good fake, you have these third parties like the police or the TSA that verify, okay, these documents are not fake. And at the airport, your passport gets signed, right? Or rather it gets stamped to prove that it's legit and that somebody checked it, just like how certificate authorities sign the certificates to prove they're legit. Okay, so in the case of YouTube, as you saw, the certificate authority is Google Trust Services LLC. And if we actually go and we look into this a little bit more, Okay, you can see that there's actually a whole chain of different certificate authorities. So, you know, this one verifies, and then this one verifies that one, and then this one verifies that one. But the initial one is issued by Google themselves. Uh, and this is something that a lot of people do, like, well, some people, they self-sign certificates and like Apple. Okay, we can see that the certificate is issued uh, by Apple Inc. And it's also verified by Apple Inc. So this is pretty much the best solution that we have right now um, to verify these connections is we have to have some third party that both your browser and the website trust. And of course, there is many flaws with this model. Okay, hopefully it'll be replaced by some kind of trustless model, possibly blockchain based system in the future. Uh, but obviously that's beyond the scope of this video. Now, Anybody can technically become a certificate authority, okay? All you really need is OpenSSL, which is a free and open source application, and then you can follow some commands to set up your certificate authority. But who is to decide if your certificate, or at least if you will be trusted as a certificate authority? Well, like I said, it all depends on the browser that you're using, and it also depends on your operating system. So for example, on Windows machines, Microsoft decides who the trusted certificate authorities are. Apple decides who the trusted ones are on Macs. And of course, people can go ahead and install additional certificates. Um, sometimes there's situations where you might need to do this, like if you're working at a company, um, but they're not going to be in those browsers like Firefox or Chrome, and they're not gonna be in the operating systems like Windows by default. You would have to go and uh, get trusted by them and probably also give those companies a whole lot of money for them to start uh, pushing out your certificates to their operating systems in their browsers. Okay, so now we can talk about what this means for Russia creating their own certificates. So right now, Russia is trying to get people to install uh, these certificates from this website to their computer. And the next part that I'm going to go into, this is just what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing from people online, but apparently some websites that Russian people are trying to visit right now from their phone or their computer, they get redirected to this site that tells them that they need to install the certificate. There's a, a segment from an email that was posted here on the Mozilla bug forms. So it says, dear friends, some sites may not open now. This is due to problems in the work of certificate authorities to check the security and reliability of internet resources in order to have access to all sites and the necessary online services, including the state services. We recommend installing browsers that support the Russian certificate. Now there is such functionality, for example, yandex.browser or Atom, hope, uh, for understanding. And of course, the reason that they're recommending these browsers is because, like I said, with browsers like Chrome or with Firefox, they uh, could potentially take away this certificate, even if it's manually installed. That's, that's something we'll talk about a little bit in a minute. Uh, but the thing is, so this isn't the first time that a government has actually tried to create a certificate authority or that they have uh, successfully done so because for one, China owns over a dozen certificate authorities that are accepted by Microsoft. Um, well, I think some have been removed uh, in the past, but I, right now I'm pretty sure it's over a dozen. Um, and so by default, those certificates would be accepted on Windows machines. 
Kazakhstan, they also infamously tried to create a root certificate authority back in 2015, which would have allowed them to spy on all of their citizens. Because if you do get someone to install your certificates or you somehow uh, were able to compromise a certificate authority, which has happened before, uh, but it's obviously very bad because then you, you saw how there's a chain of uh, certificate authority and then like the certificate authority, certificate authority, the higher ups will um, ban that certificate authority. If something like that happens, if you know they get hacked or especially if they're purposefully trying to leak their keys, but anyway, if you compromise the certificate authority, then you can perform that same man in the middle attack that I talked about earlier, except even when you go to click on the padlock to check who signed it, it's still going to look legit. So the Kazakh government, they went through an ISP in the country to tell everyone that they need to install the certificate in order for internet to work, kind of like what Russia is doing right now. But then Mozilla and Google simultaneously announced that uh, they were going to block them in their browsers. And they would block it even if people were trying to manually install it. And Apple also did the same thing with Safari. And Microsoft wasn't as extreme in their approach, but they never added the Kazakh Certificate Authority to their list that is automatically installed by Windows. So the only people that ultimately could have been spied on, that the Kazakh government could have spied on with this, were Windows users who manually installed the certificate uh, and they only used Internet Explorer or Microsoft Edge, which I imagine is not very many people. Uh, and I guess also if people on Linux wanted to install it on uh, some alternative browser like Surf or SeaMonkey, uh, that might have worked as well. But obviously, I don't think anyone that's that tech savvy would do something like this and allow the government to spy on them. They probably are using those uh, to avoid government surveillance. Um, now, as of right now, it does not appear that these certificates that Russia just created are being blocked by any companies. So I imagine that if everything in uh, this Mozilla bugs thread is true, that a lot of Russian people are installing this uh, to their devices because right now they can't access certain websites or government services. Um, you could even install these yourself if you wanted to for some reason. You could just go here and download and install the certificate. But I think the big question that is on people's minds is, is this certificate a bad thing? Is it something that people should avoid? And is Russia going to use this to spy on their citizens and block traffic that they don't want them to see? And the only honest answer is that we don't know. Obviously, this is going to give Russia the technical capability to decrypt people's traffic or to redirect people to fake versions of websites. All of that is going to be possible for them to do. And when you consider the fact that Russia, just like the United States and China and most other governments for that matter, they do spy on their citizens. So I have a feeling that this will at least occasionally be used for that, right? Maybe they'll use the excuse of, oh, it's for uh, homeland security or to fight drugs or crime or some something like that. Um, but there are some legitimate reasons, okay, why Russia, at least in their current position, would go ahead and create a certificate authority. So uh, we can look at these certificate authorities or these certificates here that were for different Russian banks, okay? And you can see that they are revoked. This one's revoked, this one's revoked, this one's revoked, this one. Uh, and then this is the Google Group's conversation talking about this. Uh, this person's already saying that they think they're preparing for a man in the middle attack. Um, but there are Russian banks that right now people can't use, or at least they can't use them with a secure connection because it looks like DigiCert was the certificate authority. They decided to revoke their certificates, which is another thing that certificate authorities can do. If, if something sketchy is going on with the certificate, like it gets hacked, um, then they can just revoke that and then it'll prevent people from uh, getting tricked. But also it can prevent people from uh, accessing it because especially with something like a bank, they probably have uh, HTTP just disabled, like they don't let people access the bank uh, insecurely, or 
even if they were able to access it like that, the browser would probably yell at them and say, hey, you're using an unsecure uh, HTTP connection. You know, don't enter your details, don't go here, uh, return to safety, blah, blah, blah. So it kind of makes sense for them to go ahead and create this certificate authority uh, so that the citizens inside of Russia and, and people can continue using the bank with a secure connection uh, once uh, Russia starts actually issuing these certificates to the different banks. So all we can really do for now is keep monitoring the situation. Uh, one thing to look out for would be to really just see what sites the Russian government actually starts issuing certificates for. Because, for example, with the Kazakhstan situation, they first started issuing certificates for Facebook, Twitter, and Google. So it was very clear that, okay, they're trying to just spy on people by first looking at the sites that people go to the most. And... Of course, the companies that are making operating systems and browsers, they have the ability to just reject uh, the Russian certificates, just like they did with the Kazakh ones. And if I had to bet, this is probably what's going to be the next move, since big tech sanctions against Russia have really been more intense in a lot of ways than the sanctions coming from most governments. Uh, and until Russia starts creating their own operating system, and well, I think they actually do have a Linux distro. That's like something that uh, some of the government uses. But until they roll that out to all the citizens and uh, they also create their own browsers and start forcing everyone to use it, they're not going to have any other way to get around the banning of their certificate authority. Uh, unless they start using one of China's certificate authorities, because they do seem to still be supporting Russia. Um, but for my Russian viewers out there who are wondering, you know, should you install this or not? It's really up to you. OK, you probably are going to need it to access some banks and government services. You could always uninstall this when you're done, uh, when you're not using those services. Uh, you can always, of course, check what certificates are being used in your browser, okay, you can go and look at the uh, more information and you can see everything that's going on with the certificate and avoid the connections that you think are sketchy, that are, you think are using the Russian one uh, unnecessarily. And of course, Onion sites on Tor are not going to be affected by this because they don't use HTTPS. And uh, if you're using things like a VPN, as long as they're not interfering with your connection between you and the VPN, then you're pretty much safe, right? That part is going to be encrypted and then it's just going to look like traffic uh, coming from a VPN or a proxy or anything like that. So that is the deal with Russia's new certificate authority and I guess a quick breakdown of how certificate authorities work. Like and comment on this video as well as share it to perform a man in the middle attack on the algorithm and have a great rest of your day.